Hello everyone. I'm Sahana, PhD student working with Dr. Vinod Skarya at CSAR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. The next session on Module 8, Alignment and Trees of Bioinformatics for Schoolers in multi, uh, is Multiple Sequence Alignment and Phylogenetic Trees. Um, in this session, we would be looking at uh, the overview of what is multiple sequence alignment, what are the applications of multiple sequence alignment, steps involved in multiple sequence alignment, and uh, how to build uh, a phylogenetic tree using multiple sequence alignment, and what is evolution, what are the forms of phylogenetic tree representations, and uh, what, uh, how do we construct a phylogenetic trees, what are the steps involved in that, and then uh, there is a demo of uh, a tool called Clustal Omega through which you can do multiple sequence alignment and also build a phylogenetic tree. So uh, multiple sequence as we all saw, uh, saw in the previous uh, slides, multiple sequence alignment is a method to align more than two biological sequences. When you have a subject sequence uh, and two more query sequences, multiple sequence alignment method is used to find the similarity between all three sequences or all the four sequences or how many ever you give. The image given here is a pictorial representation of multiple sequence alignment. Here are three sequences. Consider these as three sequences each box in each of these lines in a different colors are uh, bases of uh, nucleotides maybe and uh, uh, you find all these sequences are aligned to find the highest similarity between all the three sequences so like pairwise sequence alignment here also we can introduce gaps to uh, get a better alignment between the sequences so there are a number of applications for multiple sequence alignment and most of them are similar to pairwise sequence alignments applications. First is the detection of structural homologies. When you have a new protein sequence for which even the family of the protein or any other information is not known, the structure can be uh, predicted by running a multiple sequence alignment uh, between all the sequences available on database and uh, your query sequences. Uh, query sequences and uh, this multiple sequence alignment can also help in improved prediction of the structure of the proteins. As we all know, the important insights of a protein or DNA sequence lies on the conserved regions or motives of their sequences. Through multiple sequence alignment, we can find these conserved regions uh, that are similar in sequences. The basic application of multiple sequences is uh, as usual the to find the similarities or detect the similarities between sequences. Based Based on the conserved regions found, we can build evolutionary trees or linkages of these sequences to understand how uh, similar are these sequences and what is the ancestral uh, sequence, uh, sequence of all the sequences available. So uh, there are basic small steps behind building multiple sequence alignment. Uh, so we can't directly just uh, take all the sequences, put it on a row and align them because it's it's not feasible. So here, what we will do is how many ever sequences you get, we try to compare all the sequences pairwise. For example, if three input uh, sequences are given, sequence A, B and C, uh, sequence A is first uh, paired with uh, sequence B and done and a pairwise sequence alignment is constructed and then uh, sequence A is again paired with the sequence C and then A to C pairwise alignment is done and then B and C pairwise sequence alignment is done. So, so we try to find all the possible combinations of pairwise sequence alignment and out, uh, out of all the possible combinations, we perform a cluster analysis on pairwise data to generate the hierarchy of this alignment and and then we built the uh, MSA by first aligning the most similar pair of sequences and then uh, the next most similar pair and then it goes on. So uh, here is a basic example of how we do a multiple sequence alignment. Here are three sequences, sequence one, sequence two and sequence three. 
first you build a pairwise sequence alignment for all the possible combinations and here we here is an example of building a pairwise alignment between sequence 2 and sequence 3 and then you try to build all the possible clusters that are uh, that can be combined and found uh, through these sequences once that is done we take the most uh, highest scored pairwise sequence alignment in this case we have got sequence 2 and sequence 3 we put them on the horizontal row of the matrix and then we put the other sequence the next sequence on the vertical side of the matrix and then again we build a, a matrix a matrix a build the map for the pairwise sequence alignment once that is done, we align all these three sequences to find the final align, final multiple sequence alignment for these sequences. So, uh, once multiple sequence alignment is done, we build a phylogenetic tree which would be a representation of uh, the multiple sequence alignment so to see how similar are these sequences. In the above slide that I gave, there are only three sequences. We were able to just look at it and say that this is similar, this is similar, this is similar. But in all the, uh, if you have number of sequences, for example, here there are like five sequences in this ancestry. You can't just go and check each of the nucleotide and say how similar are these sequences. For in that uh, case, we built a phylogenetic tree as a representative of my, uh, multiple sequence alignment to find uh, the most similar sequences and then how these uh, alignment has been built. So, what is the advantage of building a phylogenetic tree is to study the evolution. So, for example, if you have three or four organisms, you want to uh, see how similar are these organisms, you go for a phylogenetic tree constructions. So, what is an evolution? Evolution in simple terms is the change in the organism over generations. So, uh, uh, through natural selections, it origins to a current existing forms and unfit forms are eliminated via environmental changes. The underlying mechanism behind this evolution is genetic changes and genetic mutations or changes. That is why we try to find the most uh, similar uh, sequences through these uh, genetic sequences or protein sequences. So phylogenetics is a study of evolutionary history of living organisms and phylogenetic tree is a diagrammatic representation of evolutionary relationship among organisms. The patterns of branching reflects how species evolved a series of common ancestors. So here uh, the nodes on each of these uh, uh, these uh, clusters or trees is considered as the common ancestor and the branches represents the length of the uh, deviation between these, sequ these sequences. So, there are uh, there are two forms of uh, representing a phylogenetic tree. First is cladogram and second one is phylogram. A cladogram is the uh, way of just uh, aligning of the external taxa and this branch lengths are not proportional to the uh, deviation between the sequences. It's, it's just a representation saying that these uh, sequences are similar and these are not. But phylogram uh, represents the length, uh, the amount of evolutionary divergence between the sequences and information about the relevant divergence time and uh, times are represented through branches. If you see the images given here, you can see all the cladogram, in the cladogram images, all the endpoints are straight. Whereas in phylogram images, the endpoints are not straight, representing that how much deviant or how much uh, deviant it is from the uh, uh, sequence that is aligned together. There are uh, certain steps in constructing a phylogenetic tree or algorithm that we follow to uh, construct a phylogenetic tree. First thing, first thing first, we have to identify and acquire a set of homologous DNA or protein sequences. There is no point in uh, running a phylogen uh, my multiple sequence alignment and then constructing a phylogenetic tree for a sequence which is completely deviant because there, there you won't get any similarity between them. If you run home 
homolog if you run on homologous DNA or protein sequences, you can find the smallest of differences on these sequence or between these sequences. First, we perform a multiple sequence alignment on this on the uh, query sequences that is given, and then we determine which method of tree building you need to do, either cladogram or phylogram and so on. And then if you estimate a tree uh, from the aligned sequence and then present the tree in a way to convey the relevant information. So here uh, is the tool called Clustol Omega, which is widely used method in molecular biology, uh, which works on progressive alignment method. And uh, most closely related sequences are aligned first, and then the group of sequences are added, as mentioned in the as mentioned in the algorithm of multiple sequence alignment. This uh, uh, Clustol Omega provides a phylogenetic tree for the multiple sequence alignment. It performs both multiple sequence alignment and also it uh, provides a phylogenetic tree in the, in the tool itself. So here we are going to see a demo of uh, how to uh, run a multiple sequence alignment and then construct a phylogenetic tree using the Clustol Omega tool. For that, in uh, in Google, if you just search for Clustol Omega, you will get this uh, first Clustol Omega uh, tool, which uh, is which is run by EMBL EBI. And when you click on this, this is the Clustol Omega page uh, first that opens. Here we are going to run multiple sequence alignment for the. Uh, protein sequences. It, since here is already protein given, if you want to run for DNA sequence or if you want to run for RNA sequence, on this play, on this uh, tab, you can change and then you can uh, you can give your query sequences. In our uh, in our example, we are going to run it on the protein sequences. So I'm just keeping it to protein, and then there are two options here. Either you can. Uh, uh, you can just paste the sequences in faster format or you can choose uh, to uh, choose a file that uh, in which you have saved your uh, sequences. In our case, I'll be pasting four sequences. Of four sequences. And so here are four faster sequences. So this is alpha globe, globin uh, uh, subunit structures uh, sequences and then directly you just click on submit. Here is step two, your parameters. So cluster W with character counts or cluster W, we are going with cluster W with character counts and then we are submitting it. So you will get a page like this. Your job is queued and will be running shortly. Uh, so it will take a few minutes to uh, run uh, multiple sequence alignment and then give you a phylogenetic tree. Uh, here I have already ran this and kept so that I can show the results. So this is this would be your uh, result page that you get from uh, Cluster Omega once you uh, paste your structure and run on uh, run alignment. So the result page will have a number of tabs like alignments, result summary, guide tree, phylogenetic tree, result viewers, submission details, and uh, the download option. Uh, there is an option to download your alignment file as well. And there you will get an option to download your guide tree as well. So uh, first, if you see this alignment, you can see we have aligned four sequences. And all the four sequences are pasted here. And the length of sequences are given. First sequence is 143 uh, amino acids. Second, third, and fourth as 142 amino acids. So this star uh, represents that uh, all the four uh, amino acids have been are same and it is aligned. And then uh, this double, uh, I mean, colon represents that three Maximum of them are aligned and few are not aligned. And the gaps are uh, places where uh, it is not aligned. And uh, similarly, dots is also where a uh, few differences have been found. So this is your uh, sequence alignment, multiple sequence alignment. When you see four sequences, since this is a shorter sequences that I've given, uh, we have, uh, we have, 
we have we can see this in short way when the larger sequence is given it will run on run it will be running on so next is result summary so here the information on how many input sequences have been given what sort of guide trees and everything is built so now to guide tree so as I said, there is this cladogram where all the endpoints are equal and it does not represent the length of the, uh, it, it does not represent the branch length as the deviation from the sequences. Whereas if you click real, you would get uh, the in, the uh, tree where it is, it is the length represents the distance between these two uh, sequences. This is how a phylogenetic tree would look like and this is your first sequences, sequence two, sequence three, and sequence four. And then okay, you can also see the uh, result submission details that number of sequences submitted and uh, the input and output sequences and so on. And uh, result summary gives you all these details. And the most important thing to check in a cluster of omega is uh, alignments and uh, the guide tree of phylogenetic tree, both are same. You can just see that. And if you want to see download your aligned file, you can download it from here. There is an option to represent this in colored format also. Each of this red uh, would represent how much they are similar and um, deviant. So these are the options and this is how a multiple sequence alignment is done and phylogenetic tree is constructed. The so points to remember uh, from this session is the best approach is to perform alignment using a combination of multiple uh, alignment programs. Molecular phylogeny is the base tool to understand sequence evolution in phylogeny. It is important to understand the assumptions and limitations while creating an efficient phylogenetic tree. And thanks for listening.